Review time. This is a hot air rework tool, the Baku 858A. It has a couple of analog dials and a power switch, and of course the uh, wand which produces the hot air. Uh, the bottom button here uh, adjusts the airflow. The top button here adjusts the temperature. And if you turn it on, you can see when the fan's spinning, it's uh, it's lit up. And then if the heater's on, the light turns on. And once it reaches a temperature as desired, you'll see it sort of flicking on and off so you know that you're at the right set temperature. A really simple device to use. Let's uh, tear this one down and see how it's built. Okay, well, let's start with a, a temperature test. Uh, I've taken the wand, I've bolted it to my bench, and I've got a thermocouple there. Uh, and that goes into a bit of uh, instrumentation, which allows me to record the temperatures onto my PC. And then I bring them into this uh, Excel graph. Uh, what I was doing is I was adjusting the temperature every 50 degrees to record it. And then, of course, I turn the unit off, and that's why it comes uh, towards zero degrees. Uh, the uh, little spike here is when I was adjusting the knob upwards. You can see it significantly overshoots. So from a control loop theory viewpoint, uh, whoever designed this uh, wasn't super careful. Obviously not a, a well-damped system. Uh, in terms of the temperature accuracy out of the box, fairly far off. Uh, for example, at 150 degrees, I get 218. At 200, 238. As you get a bit higher, it seems to get a little bit more closer to calibration, 400, 439. At the end here, actually quite uh, bang on. So uh, first thing first, I think, is uh, to see if we can calibrate these temperatures so they're uh, more representative of what's desired. So although the set point wasn't that accurate of the box, there is a potentiometer on the front panel of this unit and it can be easily adjusted. I set it to 300 here, for example. Uh, and of course, now I'll have it reading uh, just around 300, which is perfect. Okay, here's a spreadsheet. I measured the output of the hot air gun at 50 degree increments. So uh, on this uh, column here, the setting is going at 50 degree slices, and that, of course, would be the x-axis. On the y-axis, I uh, graph the ideal, which is the blue line, and the red, which is the measured line. Because I calibrate it through the calibration of potentiometer at the 300 setting, of course, very, very close, you can notice though down here that the curves separate quite significantly, and then up here it looks like they start to separate again. So even though there's a calibration plot on the uh, unit, it only sets a single point and doesn't adjust the curve of the line. Looks kind of an exponential here, and maybe a little bit exponential here, like almost like an S-curve. And uh, that's a good indication that whoever did the control theory and the control loop on this uh, device didn't do a really great job. You see that a lot, I think, with uh, Chinese test measurement equipment. You see lots of times when control loops aren't done very well. And uh, here we see it again. Now, it's only a fairly academic uh, interest, quite frankly. When you're soldering, you only have to be within a few degrees anyways. Uh, down here, maybe a little bit more significant if you were dealing with some sort of a low temperature thing and the gun's coming in. You can see quite a bit hotter than what you've uh, dialed in. So, uh, there we go. So, look at the manual. It claims it's a 700-watt unit, but uh, just off the camera, I have the uh, unit turned on to its highest possible setting. I'll just turn the unit on. And it will jump to 500 watts, uh, but nothing ever beyond that, uh, 525 here. Uh, never close to 700, so I suspect that 700 watt rating is a little bit optimistic in the manual, uh, because I can't get my unit to consume much more than uh, 500 watts. Uh, that would be important, of course, because the more wattage it consumes, the I presume the hotter the air it could produce. Uh, let's uh, do some basic electrical safety testing. Uh, I'm in North America, and this is the North American plug. The chassis ground is here. I would hope that the wand here has uh, that grounded. Then we do a quick check of continuity. Uh, and sure enough, this is the chassis ground. Now in my world, uh, the hot lead is on uh, my right-hand side. Uh, this unit has a fuse in it. You can see I've just taken it out. And the fuse should be on the hot side of the assembly. Uh, there, were some hot, uh, there were some hot air work tools previously, not from this manufacturer, but from uh, other companies where they actually put the fuse on the wrong lead. And you can see there's continuity there, which is really good, so that tells me that they've got the uh, uh, right uh, lead, pardon me, the right uh, wire uh, fused. Let's um, take the unit apart and let's see uh, the assembly quality. So the unit disassembled, uh, we have the power coming in, of course, a fuse on this panel here, runs through a transformer, uh, and then to what appears to be a single-sided phenolic circuit board. Uh, let's see, the color codes, of course, look more European than they do North American, but uh, that's okay. You see a lot of use of hot melt glue. I'm not quite sure why, because these should be affixed through a, a mounting of screws. You can see it's actually loose. I'm not sure what the uh, love affair they have with uh, hot melt glue, but uh, you often see it. Now here comes, we got the chassis ground wire coming down into this metal plate here. Uh, problematically, uh, it's actually supposed to be a crimp connection, but it looks like it's soldered. And I'm pretty sure that you really want to crimp there, because obviously if this gets hot, uh, what you don't want is the solder melting uh, during a fault condition. Uh, carries through the body of the chassis on then onto uh, this uh, wire here and it looks like it probably goes up to the wand the other wire carrying the uh, these uh, chassis ground so 
Uh, that seems to be okay-ish. Uh, um, let's see. Um, there was no paint removed though, so the metal top here to ensure the continuity. I uh, normally would expect a thinning mask off to make sure that this plate here also uh, was held grounds in case they get a single uh, fault onto the chassis here. You want to make sure you have good continuity so the fuse blows reliably. So uh, you can solve that probably with a little bit of sandpaper. Uh, let's see the circuit board here, uh, a real model of uh, simplicity. Uh, it's marked as TI and it looks like a microcontroller, although the, the TI markings look a little bit sketched. I'm not quite sure if it's a knockoff or it truly is a TI controller, but knockoff or original wouldn't matter. Uh, a very appropriate choice, a very small microcontroller is uh, about the uh, extent of the compute power that you need. Uh, otherwise, it looks like it's a fairly analog uh, function for setting temperature. There's obviously some power MOSFETs here to uh, control the heater function. Um, the actual assembly quality, beyond the, the fact that they just extensively use hot melt glue to glue things to the panel, which is funny because these are all snap fit, and normally if you get the tolerances well enough, uh, they'll usually snap fit quite well. So, um, anyways, lots of hot melt glue. Um, and uh, yeah, just on this side here, just the potentiometers for the uh, the calibration adjustment, of course, the heat and the uh, uh, air volume. So it looks like it's uh, an entirely uh, through hole uh, uh, assembly. So, um, yeah, I mean, it looks adequate. I mean, we're looking at a very inexpensive hot air rework tool, you got to remember. So even though I've noticed, I don't think it's drawing the 700 watts they claim. Uh, the control loop for temperature is a little dodgy in my mind and the calibration is of course impossible because no matter how much you calibrate one set point it doesn't hold the curve across. Um, this, is a, this is an entirely usable tool um, and certainly to get into the professional class of hot air rework tools uh, a thousand bucks would be a, a much more expected amount of money to pay. So, um, you know, compared to the previous version I had, uh, this is much of my second hot air rework tool. This one's actually assembled a much more uh, reliably than uh, the one I had previously. It actually had some of these uh, serious errors electrics. I don't see that here on this unit here. Anyways, that was the uh, Baku 858A. I grabbed out of uh, Amazon.